Well, we are going to bring you some more on the breaking news that we brought you a bit earlier today. The former NRL coach and player Paul Green has died at the age of 49. We're bringing in now the senior sports writer for the Courier Mail in Queensland, Robert Crash Craddock. Really appreciate your time. This is obviously shocking news coming through in just the last half an hour or so. Obviously, the NRL community would just be rocked, shattered by this news. Well, absolutely, Ash. Uh, I've just come out of the Courier Mail newsroom where there's a sense of, of great numbness and, uh, and shock and, and real sadness. Uh, Paul Green was a very popular person in Queensland on any number of levels. He was a, a fine player for Winner Manly in the District League in Queensland. He loved and, and, of course, he coached the Cowboys to their inaugural premiership. Uh, so to hear that he has died suddenly this morning has really rocked the community up here. It really has. What do we know about the circumstances so far? It's obviously early days with few details at this point. Yeah, look, it's a good question and it's only broken within the last half hour, Ash, so uh, I'm not prepared to... Uh, well, uh, certainly police aren't prepared to speculate right now on the cause of death, uh, but it happened uh, earlier this morning. Paul uh, had been living in Brisbane after parting with the Cowboys uh, as their coach. He coached the Queensland State of Origin team last year, of course. They lost the series. And he was in a difficult stage of his career and his life because he parted ways with the Queensland team and couldn't get another job as a club coach, which he craved, and he was a coach in waiting. So he was going through a, a, a challenging phase of his career. We so often find that rugby league coaches, after being so embedded in the system for so long, the sport so consumes them, that it can be very difficult transition process uh, when they leave the leave the game. Oh, just devastating news and and so sad for, as you point out, so many former players, teammates, not least the North Queensland Cowboys. His greatest achievement with the Cowboys, I, you tell me, I, I assume would have been that 2015 Grand Final. They defeated the Brisbane Broncos, the first premiership win. Um, what do you see as his legacy, as, as his role in that historic win in particular? Oh, huge, Ash. And, 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 you know, that would be... It was the absolute golden stud of his coaching career. I mean, he took that Cowboys team through. Uh, you know, he, he gave them a hard edge. He was a very dedicated coach, a passionate coach. And I remember in the week after that, when he, when he had a beer... He came on the back page on Fox Sports and uh, we had a drink with him afterwards. And do you know what? He was the happiest guy in the world. All the stress was off his shoulders. He spoke through all the uh, tension he felt when Jonathan Thurston had that last kick from the sideline to win the game and it hit the post. And, uh, you know, he, he was a wonderful coach. But can I say this? He was a really underrated player. The, the best and player, fairest player awards in each state, what used to be called the Rothmans Medal, he won it in Brisbane for Easts and he won it in Sydney for Cronulla. I can't think of another player who's done it in both states. He was so underrated. A really clever, feisty halfback who was, you know, it, it, he just always seems to be in someone's shadow, but a fine, fine player. When he, he played for five different clubs and then he started his coaching career he was great mates with two uh, very well-known Queenslanders, Alan Langer and Ben Eichen. Ben was his assistant coach when he was coaching down Wynnum Way, and he felt Paul had a great mind. And Alan Langer, when Paul coached at the Broncos, they were both assistant coaches, and they loved getting together after dark and having a quiet ale. They were great buddies, you know, and there was always a, a wink and a nudge the next morning. Oh, what time you finished last night? They were... Alan will be devastated. Alan Langer and Ben Eichen, I promise you, will be devastated over this. Mm. And I see he's survived by his wife, Amanda, and, and children, Emerson and Jed. Are we getting the tribute starting to flow through yet? As we point out again, it is such early days. Yeah, look, uh, to be honest, it, it, the news only came through 20 minutes ago that the tributes, I'm sure, as I sit before you, Ash, are probably happening on, on social media. And, and they will be wide-ranging and very sincere because he covered so much ground in his career. As I said, with five different clubs, uh, you know, he was terrific for Cronulla. He came to the Broncos right at the end of his career. But he was the sort of player who... 
uh, was passionate and sincere and had good mates. You know, Joe, like, he formed such a good liaison with people in North Queensland, like Jonathan Thurston. They, they worked together, they plotted, they planned, and they got the Cowboys over the line for that wonderful premiership. And he was hard-nosed, you know. He, he fell out with the occasional player. That happens. But uh, a really good coach. And uh, as I sit here before you today, Ash, I, I, you know, I do so with a sense of numbness uh, because the news, as I say, is only half an hour old. I understand he was in Sydney only last weekend for the Cronulla Sharks reunion. He was still very active with his former teammates. Do we know how much of a connection that he still had with, with those clubs that you mentioned before? Yeah, he was. He had a. Uh, uh, there was a couple of players at uh, Cronulla who he really got along well with, and as I said, at the Broncos, uh, he still exchanged uh, text messages with Alan Langer. Alan Langer was in the Brisbane room when the Cowboys won the premiership in 2015. Yet when the dust settled, he sent this lovely little text to Paul saying, "Mate, you deserve that." He said, "We're all heartbroken, but." You know, you've worked so hard for that. Now you've got it. Congratulations. And I always felt it was a big rap on Paul that, that Ben Eichen, who's such a good judge of everything rugby league, isn't he? Of everything football and, and, and of a person, he, he liked Greeny. And, uh, I, you know, when so when uh, Paul applied for the Cowboys job, and I think Ben might have even been on the board, you know, it was a very easy decision to, uh, to approve it. And he, he thought he was quite something. And the news, obviously, just so particularly tragic for North Queensland, coming after the tragic death of his close friend, the former Australian cricketer, Andrew Simons. Yep, yep. And, and, and you know, uh, that was the last time I actually saw Paul Green at uh, Andrew Simons' funeral in Townsville. And he flew up for it, and he sat very quietly uh, near the back row at the service, and then he joined the players and a group of special guests um, upstairs to celebrate Andrew's life. And at the time, uh, you know, he spoke of the fact that he loved the character of Simons and how Simons loved his rugby league. He said he was such an easy guy to talk to. And uh, look, you've never seen two more different guys than Andrew Simons and Paul Green, and yet they connected. Andrew used to go to Cowboys games and uh, Paul loved having him there. So uh, they, they were... I thought it was a really good effort of Paul to, to, to fly out for that funeral. And he was one of the last ones to leave the wake. He was just talking to all the cricketers and sharing our memories. He was so happy. It was, uh, it was really quite something. So, Crash, how would you describe his leadership style? It sounds like he was a mentor to so many within the NRL. Passionate and strength. I would say they're the two, Ash. Like, he was decisive in what he wanted. He was passionate about it. He was hot blood. And, yeah, sure, he was, you know, he could, could at times be a man of moods up and down. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think a contrast in that way to the current coach, Todd Payton, who, who's, who's very level. But, you know, that that's fine, you know, because he whipped that dressing room into shape. You know, and I think of people like Peter Parr, who, who the football manager in, in North Queensland, he will be devastated today as we speak. You know, uh, Thurston, uh, all those guys from that premiership team, you know, it, it was a bond which was, you know, going to last forever because when you share a premiership like that, so special, the first one for the club, beating your arch enemy, doing it with a, with a field goal at the end of play. I mean, it just bonded that group together for life. They've had their differences, but... Yeah, it's a it's a day of monumental sadness, Ash. I just you know honestly, it's uh, the the, uh, the the when the news came through half an hour ago, people are walking around the newsroom here with their phones, just saying, "Have you seen this?" You know, it's uh, really really sad. Yeah. Crash Craddock, sorry to have to talk to you under these circumstances, and our condolences to all of his friends and family and those who are mourning that tragic loss today. Appreciate you joining us with your insights and reflections. Thank you. No, it's, it, thank you, Ash. And I just want to echo uh, those thoughts to Paul Green's family and all the people who are just finding out about it now, who I know the rugby league community is in sorrow over this and recognise him for being the fine guy that he was and the very underrated player, of course, 
the coach who took them to the premiership, uh, their first premiership, and it was a, a wonderful life. And, uh, yeah, it's tremendous sadness today. Thank you, Ash. That ended the grand final. Ballet, Paul Green, and, a remarkable uh, life. Just made we'll bring you more reaction and tributes as they come in throughout the afternoon here on Sky News.